Good morning, my beautiful souls, and welcome to Tash Talks. So, let's get this perfect. Say hello in the chat box when you come on. Just trying to get the screen right. Let's. I went to go and sing that song. Let's get it on. <laughs> so, yeah, Tash perfect. Talks. We are live. Excellent. Amazing. Good morning my beautiful souls and welcome to episode 12 of the Tash Talks live show. If you are new here, hello and welcome. Just to give you the gist, every single Friday at 10 a.m. GBT, GMT even, GBT, GMT, I am here live answering your personal questions about mindset and business, right? It's about being raw, it's about being real, it's about keeping it to the point and everything that I share with you is from my experience, my journey, my opinion on it. That's what it is. So let's get up your questions. Amazing. And before we get rocking into the questions, I want to kind of give you a gist of what's going on in my world at the moment. So as you know, it was my birthday week this week. Thank you so much for your messages. Had the most incredible birthday. You're probably still seeing some birthday balloons here. Flamingos everywhere. Like Santiago has learnt the word flamingo now because there are flamingos everywhere. Flamingo cake, have flamingo cards. Thank you all so much to my audience and clients for sending me beautiful cards. You are just the best. So that we celebrated on Tuesday. Now, my birthday's normally kind of like a month long. So I've got more celebrations this weekend, more celebrations the weekend after. It's all good, fun and games. So that's what's been going on. We're also in the middle of doing my three day workshop, which has extended to five days. I've done two bonus calls, one today at 11, 11 p.m. time, and one on Monday back to the 11, 11. And this is all about breakthrough in your online business. So if you haven't signed up already for that, sign up because you get some more juiciness and you have to be in on the email list in order for you to actually be in the competition to win three incredible prizes, may I just say. <laughs> you can get a one-on-one -on -one with me. That's the first prize. The second prize is a masterclass, which is worth £97. And the third prize is one month in my mindset membership, the tribe. So pretty awesome prizes, if I do say so myself. And of course, we have opened the doors for round two of Conscious Coach. Conscious Coach is my six-week transformational program where we tap into the unconscious mind and we shift those limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck. We tap into self-love, helping you become more confident, full of self-love, feeling worthy, stepping into your personal power, being able to collapse time. Like, it's just an a transformational six week potent program. This isn't an online course. This is an online course on steroids. This is the content of an online course, but the liveness, the hot coaching of a live program. So DM me if you would like the link to sign up to join. We start the second week in April or DM me if you have a question around Conscious Coach and you can always pop them in here as well if you do. And if I can try, I'll try and get onto them. So let's get cooking, good looking. Here we go, question one. Can I ask you why you don't show Santiago on social media? Yes, absolutely, of course you can. I do not show Santiago on social media. Okay, it's kind of, let me dissect it. Firstly, I do not want like, I want that part of my life to myself. I share so much. I am so open. I am so raw. I'm so real. I'm, I say it how it is. I'm very honest. I share so much of the behind the scenes of building my business. I show so much of me as a person, my personal life, my relationship, my marriage, like everything. I kind of just want one element of my life just for myself. Um, and of course, my, my clients get to see him and my friends and family, obviously. So that's one element to it. Another element to it is, I, my, my husband's not on social media. So of course he understands and supports the fact that my whole life near enough is on social media, but he doesn't choose to do that, and that's fine. That's why you'll also rarely see Michael on my Insta stories. 
He is hilarious, may I just say. Like, he needs his own, we need our own Clark TV show, right? The stuff that happens every day in our lives are just like freaking unreal, right? So we definitely need our own TV show. But my point is, he doesn't have social media, so he wouldn't want Santiago on social media. And lucky enough, I also agree with that. I don't want Santiago on social media. I want to give Santiago the choice. I want him to get to a certain age, which I'm sure he will, and he'll say, Mum, I want an Instagram. And I go, okay, if it's for business, boom. If it's not, you're not having it. <laughs> Only joking. Uh, kind of not joking, but I want him to get to an age where he makes that decision rather than that me. It's my business. It's my life. This was my decision to show these areas of my life. So I want to kind of give Santiago that chance. And another side, another practical side to things is, of course, when you do things in your business and new people come into your world and they're not your idle clients and they don't get it, and let's say you're talking about something that can trigger someone, maybe it's money, maybe it's success, maybe it's um, unconscious beliefs. You know, some of the things that I say are going against the grain. You know, some of my beliefs isn't the logical way to believe something. What I've been able to achieve in my life isn't what most people achieve in their life because they decide not to think the way we think, right? So people are going to say not very nice things. Now, I'm very fortunate. I feel like I manifest this. I have the most dreamy people come into my world, but, and this is a massive but, it doesn't mean that not to say that, especially if I do ads to a cold audience, you're going to get people that are not saying very nice things. So I do not want to put that out to Santiago because... It's one thing you saying something not very nice about myself, I can take it. You can say something about my appearance and call me ugly and do whatever, right? That, that's, that's down to you. That's your projection, your mirror. But you don't mess with my son. And I'm not going to allow somebody that arena to be able to do so. So that's me. And that's the reason why I keep Santiago off my social media. Like I show, because I, like I, I can't not show my life with my, without my son in it because he's my life, right? But I'll show things like, and this is really good actually, great question because if you feel the same about your kids, if you feel the same about you don't want to show your relationship, maybe you don't want to show your house, those types of things, you do not have to. It's not what we show which then gets us the clients. My clients don't come to work with me because I show my house or my husband on social media, right? So you don't need to do that in order to have a successful business. But for example, what I do is I show the back end, like the back, um, Santiago's back head. Maybe he's going to do the farm animals. So I'll do that and I'll put a song behind it. Maybe it's a photo of me just hugging Santiago and you can just see the back of him. Or maybe it's his hands doing a puzzle. So I still show elements of my life with my son in it because it would be impossible not to. But you just never will see his face. Or, and my friends and family all know this as well, when it was his christening, I'm like, you absolutely can, can share, because there's a big party here, you absolutely can share photos of the day, but you just never show Santiago's face, and everybody knows that. You know, my sisters, when we go out for a day out, they put a heart over his face. Like, that's, everybody just knows, right? And that's really good to learn about boundaries. I don't have to explain myself to somebody. I don't want my son on social media, that's it. So, you need to stand in that boundaries and that power for yourself too. And this is really good for a um, retired people pleaser. <laughs> okay, what time do you start your day? Would love to know what your morning routine looks like. Yes, okay. I will absolutely share this, but I do want you to understand some context behind this. Before I tell you what time I get up, I want you to understand I go to bed early. Okay, I'm in bed at 9 p.m. That's just me. Uh, you know, for example, if I'm out at the weekend or things, then I'm the Irish girl. I'm staying up till God knows when, right? I, you know, I love to be up and be around people and I love that energy. But the majority of the time, in the week especially, I'm in bed early. So just understand that. Just have some context around that. I don't go to bed at midnight and then get up at 3 a.m. Like, that's not what I do. I do wake up at 5 a.m. every single day, apart from this week, I have been getting up naturally without alarm, because the five o'clock is normally an alarm, at 4.30. This morning was 20 past four, I woke up naturally. And this isn't, oh, I'm waking up and I'm tired, I'm waking up and I'm like, bing, I'm good to go. But I was in bed last night at half past eight, not asleep, but I was in bed. I was winding down, killing, chatting to my husband, about our days. So, and then I was probably asleep around quarter past nine. 
So of course, even my sister was saying this to me this morning, she was like, how do you get up at 20 past four? I'm like, Katie, I go to bed so early. I, I have the sleep I need. I don't get out of bed and think, oh my God, I'm so tired. I also don't entertain the, that sort of language in my head. So I want you to understand that first, that I go to bed early. So I wake up normally at five, so let's go with that. Normally at five, then I will set in the intentions for my day. Like today is gonna to be an incredible day. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna give so much value today. I'm gonna to have so much fun. Like today's gonna to be about so much fun. This isn't work to me, this is play. Like they're my intentions that I'm setting for the day. It, you know, so then what do I do? So brush teeth, contacts, I've set my intentions. Then I'll go and make a coffee and it's the most incredible tasting coffee. I only have one coffee a day. It's that, you know, that five plus five a.m. one. It's amazing, I love it. Have that, go into my sitting room, um, set the tone, put my candles on, my incense spray, that feels good. Then I do my gratitudes, my journaling, um, my RRT exercises, and then a meditation. Then once I've done those, I then quickly get changed in my workout gear and I work out with my sister normally around 6.15 every single, well I say every single day. We commit to four times a day, four, four, times, a, four times a week. So I train at 6.15, that is only for half an hour. Sometimes she makes me do 45 minutes, but the majority of the time it's for half an hour. Then, if Santiago isn't up yet, I'll quickly have a shower, or he may be and Michael's got him up, have a shower, get myself dressed and ready, or Santiago's woke up and our morning starts. Then what that looks like after that is very different. It depends on if it's Tuesday or Thursday, it's a fun day. Fun day with me and Sans, so what are we doing? Um, we might be going to pick up my nephew, going to London with my mum. We might be just having a fun day here in Surrey. Like, that will look very different and that just literally just mum, mum mode. In between me, like voice note my one-on-one -on -one clients, right? And then on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday are my work days. So Santiago goes to nursery on Mondays and Fridays. Um, Michael dropped in this morning, so as soon as I worked out, I then could eat. I then got myself ready and then got, I was in my office at 8 a.m. ready to freaking play, okay? So... And then because I work those three days, I'm very proactive, I'm very productive. I work on my energy and I work on, so before, as you can see, before I even open the laptop or start doing my work, I've already done all my inner work. So of course then I'm ready to go in the office. I'm in a vibe, I've got the energy, I'm good to go. Rather than getting up, grabbing the coffee, going, oh my goodness, open the laptop and get going. That is, that is, a fast track to burnout, let me tell you. You may think you're being so productive and you're in your office at 6 a.m. and everyone loves a hustler. It's a one-way ticket to burnout. You're in this, you know, you're in this game of business to create a successful, sustainable business. So the only way you can sustain that is by sustaining yourself, is working on yourself. Okay, next question. How do you stay so consistent with your social media? Your content is on fire. Thank you. I make it fun. Social media to me is fun. It's about playing. When I post on social media, I have no attachment to, I am posting this in so I get a sale. I post to post. I post because I see my social media, let's say my Instagram as an example, as a content library. I want somebody to come into my world, go onto my Instagram and binge all my content and be like, wow, my goodness, this carousel is so informative. I love the energy from this reel. Wow, I just learned something. Oh my God, cool, I didn't know you could do it like this. Wow, she really is living and embodying what it is that she talks about. That's what my purpose of social media, it's my free value place it's where i give tons and tons of value so it's it to me social media is as important in my business as my inner work as my serving my clients as you know for example when we're doing our bookkeep our bookkeeping or our excel doc to see how much we earned that week you know it's as important as it is to be marketing your business right social media is extremely important in your business it is in mine. And if it's not, <clears throat> if you are not making that a priority, then this needs to be your wake up call to do so. This needs to be your wake up call to do so. If you are not using social media to grow your online community, then you you're missing a huge part of business. Like Instagram, 
isn't, like for business anyway, Instagram isn't just so you be the consumer. You need to be the creator. You need to be creating the content so your audience consumes that. And I always say this, that you need to make this a priority because this is part of your business, but how do you expect to get clients and, and scale your business to that next level if you're not willing to put the work in? Because I hate to break it to you, but running a business is work. It doesn't feel like hustle and graft because I love what I do. That's very different. It doesn't mean there isn't work to be put into it. It doesn't mean that I don't consistently show up on social media. It doesn't mean that I'm con consistently creating free content, workshops, challenges, webinars, lives. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm not doing this all behind the scenes, right? There's strategy in running a business, but you have to commit to that. You cannot expect to just show up once on social media, try and sell something, and then expect you to be sold out. Everybody that you are seeing that has done that has got a hot audience and has been doing all the back leg work prior to this. That's why they can go on and do like a flash sale or jump onto one in story and be sold out. They've done the leg work. So if you're in that early stages, you're building your business, this needs to be key for you to be focusing on your social media, giving great value. And as you scale it, you've already done that, the leg work. So now we can monetize it more. We can leverage your social media more. In your opinion, what do you think of people sharing figures and numbers on their social media? Great question. In my opinion, what do I think of people sharing figures and numbers on social media? I think it's incredible once or when it is in alignment. Why shouldn't we as entrepreneurs be celebrating our own milestones, which then in return inspires our audience? I know, for example, my coach, um, shared all her numbers and I used to love it. I used to be like, wow, you're showing me what is possible. This is incredible. But, and this is a massive but, if it's done in a way to sell, if it's done in a way to sell, then I think it's icky. If your intention to put out your number of how much you earn or how much your client earned that month, and the intention behind it is to just get people in with, with those kind of being in a trance of those numbers, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. I believe it's shallow and I, I believe it lacks authenticity. I feel like it's extremely important that you stay authentic to who you are, your, your morals and your core values. So yes, I think it's really important and I, I love to share my client wins and I will also share my own. But, and you'll probably notice this, it's, it's more about for me when I share my clients wins it's more about how they feel because of what I teach because it's business people have got into this kind of a trap of being I'm only successful if I'm making this much money I'm only good enough if this I do not want somebody to come and work with me just because of how much money I make that's not what I want I want there to be a connection I want there to be a deep vibrational vibe between us I want you to see how I can transform you and how you are feeling and thinking then the money is the byproduct. So in order for me to do that, I have made sure that I have created or made a stance of not sharing so much of my clients' monetary wins and focusing more on their transformation from the inside, likewise my own. You will hear me talk about non-stop about how I'm more regulated, how I um, don't get triggered, and if I do get triggered, this is how I deal with it. You'll hear me talk about how I'm feeling internally, You'll hear me talk about how I looked at my online banking account and felt neutral or when I signed a high ticket client and I, I, set, I felt neutral around it. I'm not talking the numbers, I'm talking about how it made me feel. And I feel like for me, that works for me in my business. So I really feel like maybe you need to hear this in order for you to understand that that isn't business. It isn't just about how much money you make. That is why I work with women that make a lot of money but they don't feel safe around the money because we ha they haven't done the internal work. They were so focused on the strategy and what's important to do, 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 and hit that milestone and make the money and go, 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 go. What's left them feeling burnt out, exhausted. They've got the money in the account, but they're not feeling wealthy. They're not feeling free. They're not feeling enough. They're not feeling worthy of everything that they have. So then what's the point? That's not true success. So I think you have to have discernment when it comes to that and what actually feels good for you to do. But there should no way be shame around celebrating your milestones. 
And also, I feel like there's a way of you doing it. So, for example, I may not say I made 50K this month. But what I could do is, oh my God, I, 25 people were in the, in the program. I may not say, oh, I made... £10,000 this month, but I may say, oh my God, I signed a new amazing one-on-one -on -one dreamy client. Okay, so can you see the difference, how you can still celebrate your milestones, but it doesn't always have to be on the money? And what's really important is that you're not also on the other end of the spectrum, not talking about the money because of the shame and because of the, oh my God, what will people think of me? Will they think I'm so money-driven? Will they think that that's all I care about? Will they think that I've changed? I'm not relatable. I'm too successful. I, I make too much money now. You also don't want that. So you want to find a real nice middle ground of how you are thinking, how you are feeling with your perspective with money. Great question, by the way. Completely loved that. Just went literally off on a nice little riff for you. Uh, okay, so I launched my new program and got crickets. Please help. Okay, I hear this so... Oh, this is like a ballot in that one minute. I hear this so, so, so much about I launched and I didn't have anyone sign up or I launched but I only had two people or five people or only ten people, right? So I'm going to talk about the strategy side first and foremost. These are questions that you need to know. How warm is your audience? Because if they are not warm, if they are not used to you selling, if you're not actually showing up and giving great value and you're only really showing up when it comes to sell, people can feel that. So how warm your audience is, is how engaged they are. So when you normally post something, is there no, no engagement, no crickets? Because if that's the case, then they're very cold. Well then of course, when it comes to selling something, they weren't gonna buy. Because if they're not engaging already, then they're not gonna go and then buy. Then you've got the war where you're like, yes, they engage sometimes, kind of on and off. I might get a few things on my polls. I might get some comments and some likes and maybe some people into my DMs. Great. They just need warming up even more. And then you've got the hot audience where they absolutely love what you do.